Lord, to everybody. We say, first of all, again, amen. We certainly thank God. We give God praise for his many blessings that he has been stored upon us. And we certainly thank him for allowing us to be able to be back into this house one more time. God has certainly been good to us. He has blessed us uh, time and time again. And he has been better to us, amen, than we have our own selves. And we give him, give him the glory. We give him uh, the praise uh, that he is so worthy of because we realize there's no one like him. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're running a little behind, but we thank God that we are getting started and we give glory to his name. Come on, let's pray at this time. Lord Jesus, we come, Lord, before you today. And Lord, we thank you. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. In a world, Lord, where so much is going on, you have been, Lord, our ram in the bush. You have been standing in the gap on our behalf. And for that, Lord, we are thankful. And Lord, we give glory to your name. And Lord, on this day, a day that has been set aside to recognize mothers, we realize, Lord, that it's a tough job being a mother. It's a difficult job being a mother, Lord. But Lord, if mothers will just keep you as the man in the middle. You are God of wisdom. You are God of guidance. And Lord, we pray that mothers everywhere throughout this world today will be encouraged. That mothers who have suffered loss will be encouraged. Mothers who are in the midst of struggles will be encouraged. We ask that you would, Lord, hold them up and give them wisdom and give them favor, Lord, for your glory. And Lord, Lord, all others who are out there listening, those who are present here in the sanctuary, bless us in this service today. Fill this place with your presence, Lord. Do only what you're capable of doing. And for that, Lord, we're thankful. And we give you praise right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome everyone, all those of you here, those, those out there listening, and those who are preparing to make their way to the house of the Lord. We certainly uh, thank God for each of you. And we want to remind everyone we're following the CDC guidelines to keep everybody safe. Amen. Six feet apart. Sanitize as often as possible. Wash your hands. And hot water and soap is available. And wear your mask. And God will bless us and keep us. We will continue by way of our services to live stream. But next Sunday, say next Sunday. Next Sunday, we will be out on the parking lot. Amen. Having some church. Amen. Bring a friend. Bring a friend of me. Bring an enemy next Sunday. Amen. And let's have some church on the parking lot. Amen. Let's let God, amen, be a blessing to everybody on this street and everybody that hear us out there lifting up the name of the Lord. Because if we lift him up, the Lord said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Men, women, everybody need to be drawn unto the Lord in times like these. So next Sunday, 10.30 a.m., out on the parking lot, and as usual, we'll be bringing some type of lunch in. We're just going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. By way of Bible class, we'll continue the same process. We hope you've been enjoying Colossians. The Word has a lot to say to the church in the book of Colossians. Amen. If you spend time there, you will learn something. You will be blessed there in the book of Colossians. And we will continue to give a lesson study or post the videos and just let God have his way. Amen.
Amen. All the givers, give yourself a hand. Amen. Amen. We thank God for each of you. We thank God for how you, you are allowing him to use you in your giving. And we want to just uh, let go and let God have his way. Amen. Because there is uh, nobody like him. You can't be him given. Give me no matter how you try. We want to thank all of you, all of our listeners out there who have also continued to give to this ministry. We want to thank you and thank God for you as well. And we want to let you know that you can continue to give using our Giveify app, our PayPal account, or the U.S. Postal Service. And God will bless you for what you do. And if you want to give today and you, you need an envelope, you can uh, raise your hand and someone will get you an envelope and Deacon Brown will uh, collect those envelopes or you can drop it in the tie box by the door. But we just want to thank you for letting God use you in your giving. Amen. in song. Can we say amen as they come? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody glad to be in the house of God today?
church say amen? Amen. amen. How great is our God. If you, think, if you think he's great, why don't you give him a hand? Praise the Lord. How great he is our God. He is an awesome God. And we certainly just give him the praise. And we certainly thank God for our ministers of music blessing us in song. And what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Angels bow before him. Uh, heaven and earth adore him. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. Before I bring our uh, guest speakers for today, I want to share a testimony about how great our God is. Uh, this past week, y'all know I announced on last Sunday uh, that I was going to be having a procedure done on, on one of my eyes. And um, I don't know if you know it, but for the last four months, even when I preach up here, uh, First Lady had to blow my scriptures up real big so I can even read them to be able to preach. And uh, so we took it to the Lord in prayer and asked God to direct us as to what to do. And the Lord said, well, don't do nothing right now, just wait. And so I waited for about four more weeks. And then the Lord said, uh, go ahead and uh, get it taken care of. And so uh, this past Tuesday, uh, I, we drove over to the hospital in St. Louis and uh, went into the surgery center. And so they prepared me for surgery and done all the preliminary stuff. And you know how they ask you, do you have a living will? And if your heart stopped, do you want to be resuscitated? And, then the anesthesiologist told me, I want to tell you about the anesthesia and some of the dangers of being uh, given anesthesia. I said, well, you don't even have to tell me that because that don't apply to me. I said, because uh, the God I serve, uh, you, you can take that elsewhere. I'm not worried about that. And so um, they uh, gave me the anesthesia and took me to surgery and, uh, you know, with COVID-19, they won't even allow your loved ones to even come in the room with you at all. And uh, so first lady had to wait out in the waiting area and they get, they gave her a pager and then they have this big board that'll tell you about the progress of the surgery. And uh, first lady, she said they came to her and told her, well, your husband's gonna be in surgery about 35 minutes. And so 35 minutes went by her husband was still in surgery. An hour went by, her husband was still in surgery. Two hours went by, her husband was still in surgery. Two hours and 15 minutes, her husband was still in surgery. But two and a half hours later, uh, they brought me out of surgery. But let me tell y'all something, before the anesthesiologist put me, sedated me, you know we talked about God's presence on last Sunday? And you know what? I feel his presence come in the room. And you know what the Lord said? The Lord said, he said, I'm here. And when the Lord said that, Mother Birdie, a calm just came over me. And I was so relaxed. And when they started the surgery, the doctor, and I'll show you how God works. The doctor talked to me the whole time, and I could hear him. He was telling me everything he was doing. Everything, Mother Bernie, he was telling me what he was doing. And then when they finished the surgery, they rolled me to the recovery room, and last time I had a procedure done and they put me under, they had a hard time waking me up. But you know what, Mother Bernie, when they rolled me to the recovery room, I was already woke. And so they gave me all these instructions, and that was on Tuesday. And so Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, the doctor said, I'm going to call you and tell you how to take that patch off of your eye. He said, now, don't be alarmed. When you take the patch off, you're not going to be able to see anything. 
He said, it's going to be just a big white like a cloud. You're not going to see nothing. He said, but don't be alarmed. He said, your eye, eye is going to be very bloodshot. It's going to look terrible, but that's just normal. Don't worry about it. So he said, take the patch off. And so I took the patch off while the surgeon was on the phone. He said, now take your left hand and put it in front of your left eye and tell me what you see. He said, you're not going to see nothing, but let, just tell me if you can see anything. I said, yeah, I see my whole hand. I see this whole room. I see everything that's in here. He, he said, you can you see everything? I said, yeah. And he said, you know, they put an air bubble in your eye to hold, hold everything in place. And he said, well, it's going to take about a week for that air bubble to disappear. He said, well, where is the air bubble at? I said, it's over halfway gone. <laughs> and so I was just giving God the glory. And that was on Wednesday. Then on Friday, I had to go and do a follow-up appointment at his office. So I go into his office, and the nurse calls me in, and they set me in the chair. And I'm telling y'all, God is amazing. Yes, he is. The last time I was in that chair, Sister Franny, they put the numbers up there on the chart, and they put the biggest letters they had. I couldn't even see the chart. But this time around, they put the biggest number and kept rolling. And she got to the last row. She said, well, you know, you're already past 2020, so I know you ain't going to see nothing on this row. I read that row off, too. She said, my goodness. She said, your vision is 2020 in that eye already. I said, to God be the glory. So the surgeon came in. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all see a preacher that practice what he preach. If I say our God is real, I believe our God is real. If I say he goes with us, he'll be with us, I believe that he will be there. And so the doctor came in after the nurse gave me the, the chart and all that. He said, well, how did he do on his eye? She said, it's 2020. He said, you sure he didn't peep out of his right eye? She said, no, I covered it up. It's 2020. He said, that is amazing. He said, Mr. Gordon, let me tell you something. Out of all the years I've been a surgeon, I've never seen anybody have eye surgery like you had and their vision be already 20, 23 days later. I said, I got another surgeon. Hallelujah. And I give God the glory, church. I give God the praise. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, you know I got to be able to see because I got some more preaching in me. And God did it, and I give him the glory, and I give him the praise, amen, for who he is and the way that he is. And I want to thank God for my brother-in-law, Andrew, and my brother, Lee. He drove me over to my follow-up appointment. They were a good fellowship. They ate me out of house and home. But I thank God for them and appreciate their blessings. Amen. Amen. So we give God praise at this time. Uh, we're going to call on uh, Minister Carolyn Macklin to come. And they're going to share with us for a few minutes each uh, as God has put on their heart to share. And we want you to listen and just let go and let God have his way. And you just might learn something and let me tell you something let me minister Macklin I know from example she loves her children she does all she can to try to help them and we thank God for her and she's coming at this time let's give her a big south down at the start of church welcome in Jesus' name. All right? Can we say amen? Let's say amen again. Amen. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day to the mothers. And a special greeting to 
Pastor James Garden and First Lady Elect Shirley Garden. Good morning to all the members, the friends, and the streaming audience. And I need to make sure that I have these on. We just thank and praise God for a day like today. Because we as women, we go through so much. And just want to encourage the mothers and the women today. For those mothers that are not mothers yet. For those that are young, teenage mothers. For mothers of all ages, all races and creed. May we bow our heads. Lord, on this day in which we honor mothers, help us to love and cherish the special women who have bore us, who have nurtured us, who have prayed for us, and our hearts overflow with gratitude to you, Lord, who formed us in our mother's womb. We pray you give each mother strength we ask you to be the daily bread of tired mothers and that may all mothers find rest in you Lord Jesus in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. our scripture this morning is found in Isaiah 49 chapter and 15th verse Isaiah 49 and 15 reads as follows can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will never forget you. God's got a blessing with your name on Now, you may say right now, I need a blessing from God. But in the shape I'm in, how can God give me a blessing? My marriage is on the rocks. I'm so depressed. My kids are acting up. I'm broke. No job. Behind in my bills. I'm sick, hurting, and all I got is trouble. Well, let me encourage you today, ladies, mothers. If you're in any of those scenarios, if you really want that blessing, here's what you do. Get up, I'm saying get up and fight the enemy to get back to God, to receive your blessing. Listen, listen. Now, I would like to ask you a question. How is your relationship with God? Now, if you're not sure, I would suggest that you do something about it. Because God is waiting just for you. Get back in your prayer closet. Stay in the word of God. Stay in praise as often as you can. Fight against the enemy to get back to God. Mothers, don't forget to praise and thank God for the small things. You have to let God know that you appreciate him. Tell him how beautiful that the sky is. Tell him how beautiful the green grass is. Tell him how good it was to wake up in your right mind this morning. Praise him for the little things. See, it's not easy being a mother because at one time or another, everyone in the household, husband, children, Sometimes the grandmother, sometimes the grand, everyone depended on you. But even though we get weary and tired, we press on. And why do we press on? Because we realize that God's got a blessing with your name. And, and one more thing. Please realize that the pandemic of COVID-19 was designed to separate the people of God. I'm talking about mothers, 
I'm talking about families. Everything you read, there are family members killing other family members. Uh, members. There are children that are killing mothers. Listen. The pandemic also was designed to get you in a place of idleness where you're bored, you're tired, we're locked up in the house, we're eating unnecessarily. And I'm sure that all of us can say that we've gained a pound or two. Amen. <laughs> because we all had to deal with that. But it's blessing time, hallelujah. It's blessing time. It's time for us to wake up, mothers. You gotta wake up. You can't just sit there and be stagnant. You gotta wake up. You gotta step up. You gotta get back into the Word of God. Now, it's not that I'm preaching to the choir because I need to do this my own self. To get back reading consistently in the Word because that is how you stay strong. But I want you to know today, I know that everybody's going through something, but I want you to know today that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You can make it, but you just got to stay in the will of God. You got to fight for your joy. Listen, listen. You got to fight for your peace. Every day. And if you do, remember this, that the blessing is yours. You know why? Because it's got your name. Amen. 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 is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also. And he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her rewards 
as she has earned. And let her works bring her praises at the city gates. Then I also uh, looked at Proverbs 14 and 1. A wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. And uh, I want to call for like, I want to call for women and the people of God to unite, to unite. Because uh, when I look back at motherhood and my motherhood, you know, people think, and they tell me that I was a good mother. But I want everybody to know that being a mother is a learning process. You don't start out being a great mother. You start out making a lot of mistakes. We all do it. Unless we had a really excellent, excellent mother. But most people start off making mistakes. It's a learning process. It's a curve. And as you grow and as you get older, you learn how to be a mother. It's not automatic. Some people think it's automatic. You have a baby, you automatically be a mother, a good mother. That doesn't happen. You have to learn this thing. And sometimes you have to even take your time and study and look at yourself and see, what is it I'm doing wrong? Why can my kids are misbehaving? How can I do this better? How can I do this better? How? How? Because, you know, sometimes you don't, when I became a mother, I wasn't in the States. I was in Germany. So I was away from family. So with my first child, I had to learn to do it mostly by myself. But then I had a great mentor who already had children that was like teenagers. So I had a great mentor in the person of Sister Maddie Hill. And she taught me some things that I didn't know. And I grew up with children. I grew up with my brothers and sisters helping. But there were things I didn't know. I just didn't know. And so she taught me. And that's, that's cause as we become mothers, yeah. a lot of times we repeat the things that we have learned. The things that were done to us. We, we, you know, we uh, say that I'll never be like my mother. I'll never be like so about son and son. I'll never be like my guardian. I'll never be like them. I'll never do this to my child. But the time is coming when you are going to do something exactly like them. Because it's been put into you. And you hated it. And sometimes you have to work this stuff out of you. You have to recognize it, put a finger on it, pray about it, and work it out. It's there because it's been put in you. And you have to realize that we can change. Don't ever think that you can't change. People say you can't change. If you have a will to change, you can change. You don't have to stay in a rut as a mother. You don't have to. You can grow. You can learn. You can improve. And you will improve your kids in the meantime. And I looked up the definition of mother. And it says, number one, a woman in relationship to her child or children. Number two, it says, bringing up a child with care and affection. Number three was, give birth to. And this was the definition of a mother. I mean, and we know what mothers do. And I can't even, people think that mothers just raise their kids. And believe me, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things that mothers do. It's too numerous to list. Because you, you can make a book out of things that mothers actually do. If you took time to just write down stuff that you do every day or every week, you would have pages and pages of stuff that you do that you don't even realize that you do because you're so used to doing it. So the things that mothers do are important for their families, they're important for their children, and they're important for the people around them. 
And so I was studying, I was thinking that I was looking up two types of mothers, the haves and the have-nots. I call them the haves and the have-nots. The Bible called them the wise and the foolish. I'm going to call them the haves and the have-nots. Because I call uh, the have-not mothers a mothers that are sometimes they're self-centered, and they only take care, they put themselves first all the time. They put themselves first. And they do this because they are doing the, the behaviors that they were taught. We do behaviors we're taught, whether they're good or whether they're bad. We continue to do things that we are taught. And then the have-nots have been taught, they haven't been taught to be grateful. Many of people that I put in the have-not, they haven't been taught to be grateful for what they have. And they're not grateful for their friends and their family and their, their children. I've heard people say things to their children that I wouldn't dream. I wouldn't dream. I wouldn't dream of cussing my child out. For real. I would I, I've heard people cuss out babies. They two, three. They getting cussed out like they're a grown person. That's 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 someone who's not grateful for their child. They haven't been, but this is like I'm saying, this is a taught behavior. They were probably cussed as a child, so they're just repeating what they were taught. And they don't fully see or appreciate the things that God brings into their lives. We gotta appreciate things God brings into our lives. We gotta, because we, we so sometimes I see people that are so busy, and I've learned this from my family. I'm talking about my family. I'm not talking about nobody else. This is my family I'm talking about. They don't appreciate what they have. They're so busy looking over there to see what they got that they don't appreciate what's in their own household. They don't appreciate the talents that their children have. Your children have talents. Your children have things they can do better than anybody else. And if you encourage that, it will grow. It will grow. What you got to do is encourage them. We got to learn how to encourage our children. Encourage our husband. When he's doing something and it's great, pat him on the back. Don't always say negative things to our husbands or to our kids. If you bring them up, they'll lift you up. If you bring them up, they will lift you up. They will let you stay in the all by yourself. Sometimes you, you feel like you're all by yourself. So if you build up, and I've seen some, one of my sisters, she's really good at this, I love her, one of my family members. They're really good at building stuff up. They, they start doing well, they be building up, they be doing good. Then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they start tearing it down again. They start tearing themselves down, tearing their kids down, tearing whatever they got down, getting down in the dumps. I guess they get depressed. I guess that's a form of depression where they just get depressed and they start tearing it down. But then there were the haves. And the haves, they know how to appreciate their husbands. They put God in the center of their lives. They put God in the center. When you put God in the center, everything is possible. Everything is possible that you want to happen. They take awesome care of their kids and their husbands. They value the things that God has put in their hands. They put value in it. They take care of it. I've given people stuff and they didn't take care of it. I'm like, that's, that's not going to happen again. But the, these people they are that have mothers, they take care of what you give them. You, can, you would see them two years later and they still got it. Hallelujah. They stand up for their loved ones and their families. They learn to get through the hard times with grace. You know, learning to get through hard times is something that we all have to do. Because hard times, if you let it, will throw you into a deep depression. If y'all haven't been in one Thank God, because I've been in one. I've been in a deep depression. And I had to work myself out of it. I had to work at it. 
I had to do it. Because the devil will tell you that you're not going to make it. The devil will tell you you're not going to make it. And you have to talk back to him and say, yes, I am. Yes, I will make it. Yes, I will make it. You got to tell him you're going to make it. I am a winner. I'm not a quitter. I am a winner. I am victorious in Jesus Christ. If the Lord helps me, so help me, God, I'm going to put this thing under my feet. I'm not going to let you destroy me. I'm not going to let you ruin my life. I'm not going to let you tear up my family. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put you down. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to lift him up because nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. Nothing's greater than the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Hallelujah. Nothing's greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want to say if we unite, if we unite and come together as children of God, yes. as mothers, yes. as fathers yes. in this life and take care of our children, our children won't be dying in vain. A lot of times our children won't be dying in vain. Our children won't be going the wrong way. I don't, I'm not saying they won't do some silly things sometimes because they do, but you can pull them out of it. You can help them up. They can become victorious in their lives. They can move forward. They can be strong. And you can build on them every day that they live. Build on your children. Build on your family. And it will be a victorious life that you live in Jesus Christ.
with a big hand at this time. All of our mothers with a big hand. Wait a minute, take a step. Amen, all of our mothers. We want to remind everyone on next Sunday, next Sunday, we will, we will be on the parking lot on next Sunday. Amen. 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 Minister Macklin, we're going to ask you to come up. Mother Birdie, we're going to ask you to come up. This is our church mother, Mother Birdie Williams. Amen. Mother Bradley is out of town right now. Just come on up, and we want to pin some flowers on our guest speakers and on our church mother. Amen. All right. Minister Mack, we're coming to come in. Yes, yes. To stand right there. We, we want you on camera. We want to get this on camera, so if y'all can come right here. Let's just have some church on next Sunday outdoors on the parking lot. 